Well, as I told you just before the break, we're going to talk education. It's been that sort of, I say week, it's been that sort of fortnight. Uh, a week ago yesterday, we had the A-level results. Yesterday, we had the GCSE results. Dr. Alison Bruton is from Queen Mary's High School in Warsaw. Uh, busy time, isn't it? Very busy indeed, yes. Uh, we were in last week looking uh, to support our girls as they got their A-level results. And then similarly, uh, this week with the GCSE. So how have they both done? A-levels, there were some exceptionally uh, uh, exceptional results with some mm. students. The overall percentage, if you're going to do it in terms of A-stars, we were slightly lower than has been. Uh, GCSEs were very good, very pleased mm. with them. Uh, and uh, the girls have done exceptionally well. We had a couple of girls who got straight A-stars. Outstanding achievement, really mm. good. In how many subjects is that? Nine, uh, nine, that? nine subjects, yes. Well, that's yeah. good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And they worked really hard. Yeah. Uh, through all sorts of, you know, some of them had some, you know, quite difficult personal problems, and yet they worked mm -hmm. through those, and uh, they've achieved really well. I'm really pleased with them. I mean, nationally, the the percentage of A stars on the A to Cs was down a bit. Mm. Does it really mean anything in the grand scheme of things? I think it does. Certainly, uh, individuals obtaining their maths and English is very key to them in terms of mm. the next steps in their education, and if they don't get that, they've got to keep going until they do. And I was uh, listening to uh, news reports yesterday about the issues associated with resitting at maths and English and how mm. uh, unsuccessful that can be for individuals. And it strikes me that clearly there's for some individuals there needs to be an alternative. And I, and I think at the moment there isn't that alternative available to them. Because, I mean, some people do say, and, and somebody said to me only yesterday, that their daughter was very good during term time, always got good. Mm. But it's when it came to exams... She got the, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it, it becomes a problem then, doesn't it? Uh, it? It does, and I do think that for some students, and I do some, sometimes think it's a, it's a girls thing for some, uh, they do get very anxious, and so we try to put in place the support mechanisms in school mm. for students to help, help them to keep calm, to provide avenues for them to approach staff uh, if they do need help and support at that very, very difficult time for them. Uh, and I think we do pretty well, though, you know, it is a difficult time and very stressful. If the percentage is varying a little bit, as say we've been told nationally, it's 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 down. Um, I mean that can be all sorts of things, can't it? I mean yeah. you might have a particularly bright intakes or not so bright intakes. Yeah. You you just might be the teaching. I mean yeah. who knows? It yeah. can be a whole range, can't it? It can be. I mean I think on a school level that certainly is the case. So um, uh, you, you do your prior att prior attainment analysis of what you expect of students, and some years uh, the the outcomes will be expected to be better than others. I would say that's not quite so much the case on a national level. And I would suggest that the reason for the reduction is probably more so the uh, increase in the uh, boundaries between the, the grades. And certainly some of my colleagues have noted that, that the grade boundaries have gone up. Uh, so you, even if, as we have, uh, the overall percentage for us was the same as last year, I would argue that that was an improvement in attainment because the grade boundaries have gone up. Because it doesn't seem so very long ago that everybody was saying, oh, well, they're getting all these good grades, but they're being lenient with the marking. It's not as difficult in mm. my day. I mean, you, they can't win sometimes. No, no, no. They? I know they can't. But I do think that now it is very apparent that the, the government's plan is to raise, raise the bar at both GCSE and at A-level, actually. Mm. Uh, and that has become apparent in this year's exams, I think. How much do league tables bother teachers and... and um, for me personally, uh, not a lot really. Uh, I, my interest is, for my particular school is in, in the students' achievement. Uh, and if, as I was talking to students only yesterday when they got their results and there was, I was sort of discussing what the next steps would be, uh, and I said to them, you know, where we are on the league tables for me is secondary to your personal achievement and what, you're, what we can do to help you to get on to the next steps uh, of your educational life. Uh, I think um, that they can be important and, some, and, and I think it's important really for parents. Parents do tend to look at league tables and make sometimes, I would suggest, snap judgments about a school uh, regarding their position in the league table. And, and I would say that parents, if they are thinking about a school for their child, they need to look at the whole school, look at, come and visit the schools, uh, look at what the whole offer is, and not just to sort of be quite picky, oh, this one's slightly above this one in the league tables, therefore it must be better, because I think there's an awful lot more to a school than a position in the league table. In terms of, of the grades, is it more important to get better results at GCSE or at A-level? It, I think it, it depends. You need both, actually. Uh, uh, and I think it's a mistake to think that GCSEs don't really matter too much if you're going on to A-level. 
uh, a number of our students at Queen Mary's High School go on to do uh, sort of quite competitive uh, courses like medicine, dentistry and so on. Uh, and, you know, what we'd say to them year on year is it's really important that you get a good crop of GCSE uh, grades and increasingly uh, you need a good crop of A-star grades because when you make your application to university, um, it's those grades that go on your application. And universities are well known uh, for saying that they will not look at a student or certainly won't take a, an application forward if there isn't that good crop of A-stars at GCSE. So I would say that both are important in different ways, really. Are they being a little harsh and judgmental in saying that, do you think? Um, no, I, d I, d I don't think they are, um, I, in terms of they have to make some sort of judgment as to whether mm. a student can get in. It's a hugely competitive field, uh, uh, and they get hundreds and hundreds of applications for a relatively sm a small number of places. They've got to get start somewhere, that's where they start. Having said that, however, um, I've taught students who've had the most uh, wonderful interpersonal skills. You think to them, they would be excellent uh, medical practitioners, they would uh, relate well with, with, with patients and yet they haven't got that cutting edge in terms of the need to get the A's and A's and B's, well basically A's for A level uh, and I sort of feel saddened by that because I think they would be very good. Uh, on the other hand, that's the way it is and that's what we have to prepare our students for. And as you say, they, they've got to draw their line somewhere. Indeed. And it, it is clearly a very fine line at times. I think it can be uh, and I think sometimes it is very difficult when, I'm, I'm talking about medicine again I suppose when medical schools are dealing with a whole crop of students all of whom have got outstanding A-level grades and then they fall back of course on, on the, I, I imagine I don't know from personal experience I imagine they fall back on other factors like uh, what, what, what was the reference like uh, what was the personal statement like uh, and also of course the, these students are interviewed as well I, I think they would take that into account as well. I mean, as well as your role at Queen Mary's, you, you also have this government role, don't you? Where yeah. you, 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 I suppose, are you a mentor? Is that the right well, word to use for Well, I think it, it depends on the nature of the support that's needed. The, the, the term is I'm a national leader of education, uh, along with uh, other colleagues within mm. Walsall. Uh, and really, we are uh, deployed to support schools in various different ways, whether it be my particular specialism is school leadership, so I might be called in to do that. Presently, I'm deployed one day a week to work with the Warsaw Local Authority in the School Improvement Office, uh, and uh, I'm working to develop leadership within uh, the local schools. And within that role, do you get involved in their results at uh, exams? Um, certainly, I have a role in, in sort of helping to, to, to looking at the results and mm. sort of put, looking at what needs to be done in order to support. I may not personally be involved in providing that support, but certainly uh, it would be my, one of my roles to act as an advisor on what might need to be done to help schools to improve. And, and the, uh, the schools we're talking about where you, you are giving this advice, is it as much a question that of with, with the students that they, they're perhaps, for whatever reason, lacking the motivation? I think that I mean, in my school, I'm very, very fortunate. I have motivated, able students who are keen and mm. want to, to progress. Uh, sadly, I think there are a number of uh, children uh, across, not just in Walsall, mm -hmm. uh, where that isn't the case and, and teachers are having to struggle to, uh, to, to motivate students to help them to realise the importance of their education. Uh, and I come back to a point I made earlier that sometimes when you're you know, making students do maths and English courses which are clearly important for them to get on to the next stage and they're not motivated to do that because they're not mm. interested, that is tough. Mm. Uh, and, and I feel you know, that, that teachers really have a tough job in some contexts to actually uh, motivate students to get them interested. Because in terms of, of teaching the basics uh, and getting them interested mm. in maths and English, there's only so much you can do, isn't there? I think there is only so much you can do and I do think that what we need to do is to turn the focus back on student responsibility uh, for mm. their own uh, achievements and, uh, and so on because certainly at Queen Mary's that's one of our, going to be one of our focuses for this year. Uh, quite often parents say what have you done to, to for my child, it's, it's your fault, it's your fault that they might not be achieving at the level I want them to do. And actually what I want to do is say, what has your child done in order mm. to, uh, to help them? And of course, clearly, uh, if you haven't got a motivated child in the first place, that's going to be t a tougher a response to yeah. receive. It's a version of the famous uh, Jack Kennedy quote, isn't it? Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Uh, absolutely. And, and I do think that we need to take a step back and think about what students are doing for themselves, giving them the tools to do that. I'm not saying that we'd leave them alone, uh, but actually mm. recognising that it is their 
their responsibility, it's their results in the end that they want to get to get on to the next stage in their career. Just a final thought, I don't know whether you've seen it, there's a, a report out today from an estate agency listing the least motivated, least community spirited uh, oh place in the country. <laughs> and it's Sad not to report, Walsall. it is Walsall, oh yes, they are bottom of a pile. <laughs> oh dear. 205th out of 206. Does that surprise you? I mean, you, uh, you know the people and the city, uh, uh, the town, well, I, I should I, say. I, I quite surprised about that because actually um, even though we do draw our, our school population from fairly wide field we have got a good significant number of local girls mm. who come to us and they're as motivated as, uh, as anybody really uh, so I, I'm really quite surprised to hear that and I hope it's not going to have an adverse effect on Walsall's uh, reputation. I think you can <laughs> make uh, these surveys say whatever you want whenever you want. I would agree with you? that yes. Alison Bruton from Queen Mary's in uh, Walsall, thanks so much for being with us. You You're can welcome. have a little bit of a rest before term starts. Yeah. And I will see you after this break.